sponsored by MyWebsiteBinder.net, where you can find reliable website hosting, email services, and affordable domain prices. A proudly woman-owned MyWebsiteBinder.net can cater to all your website needs, big or small. You can have a website up in less than an hour using sophisticated yet easy to use web tools like cPanel and WordPress. And for our Spanish speaking friends, check out paginaus.com. Now let's get to the show. Hello all. Thank you for joining me again. This has been an incredibly difficult year and it seems like the vibrations of our planet are plummeting. I feel distressed. Where I live, we are actually going back um, to lockdown for Christmas. And I've been speaking with colleagues, friends, family, pretty much everyone I know is um, pretty fatigued. Um, this has taken a toll on our mental health. And the first step to having solid physical health is having good mental health. And um, from what I know, Eastern medicine knows this, but the West has a lot of catching up to do. And um, the purpose of Sophia is not to get political. I don't subscribe to any political ideologies. I don't support any politicians or so-called leaders. And the reason I think is because I was trained as a journalist and my instincts at this point um, is to be skeptical, to distrust, which is very difficult reconciling that with my new spiritual self. I don't want to think that everyone out there is an evil blood sucking entity. <laughs> I don't want to think that all the people at the top of the food chain want our demise. I, I don't want to think that. And so that is why I debated about posting this audio that I found. But um, I feel that part of being a new spiritual person is to take the experiences that are given to you, the little clues along the way and share them because they are important and necessary. Um, they are messages from the beyond, part of the destiny that we all actually chose um, before being born. I truly believe that. And I know some of you listening may may seem like it's, may think that this sounds crazy. Um, but if you haven't seen the other side and I've seen the other side, I've communicated with the other side. Um, I know things, I know. I, I want to talk about that in future episodes um, because I think it is important. And some people who have had similar experiences to me may feel like there's no one out there that can understand, but there is. Anyway, um, moving on. So going back to the audio that I found, and I have to tell you about London first. So in July of 2017, I went on holiday to Ireland and London with a friend. And while we were walking around Westminster Abbey, you know, it's just Westminster Abbey. And then you see Big Ben, the, the clock, you know, you see all these, all these interesting places. And we saw a group of Chinese people practicing something called Falun Gong. And it was a meditation, but Falun Gong is also a religion. So we, we didn't know that at the time when we stopped by to ask what was going on and they told us that. And a lovely woman there explained um, that they were actually protesting. And the woman, I'm really sorry, I, I don't have her name. 
she explained to us that they were protesting the organ harvesting and there was to be a, a talk about the issue. And I told the woman that I was a journalist and I asked her more questions. She then asked me if I wanted to participate in which of course I said, uh, yes. <laughs> so she kindly put me on the press list. And I'm embarrassed to say that I actually never really heard of organ harvesting. I mean, I kind of knew what it was. You hear about these organs being sold on the black market, but honestly, I never even thought about it, let alone know that this was something the Chinese government is heavily involved in amongst other crimes against humanity. Um, later that evening, I went to Westminster and I was given a badge and access to the spectacular building I mean, yes, it was, um, it was surreal. And um, so I'm walking through and just to see that entrance, which is, it's, oh, I'm like, it's like, it's spectacular. It's just, um, you could probably Google it, see um, pictures on the internet that would not do it justice because it was just like going into a storybook, you know. Um, so I went up the steps. I wasn't allowed in the parliament area. You know, that's strictly for the MPs and the prime minister and all those people who work there. So I wasn't allowed to even look. Believe me, I asked. <laughs> and they said, no, sorry, can't. Um, so I had to ask several people where the room was, where the meeting was to take place. And I finally found the room and I entered and I just remember it wasn't a huge group of people. It was just, it was small, it was intimate. Um, there were a few MPs. Um, I remember one actually from Northern Ireland. Um, there was a, the journalist, Ethan Gutman, who went to uncover as a tourist. So he went there uh, as a tourist to investigate, to see if these horrors were, were real and they were. And he wrote a book about it called The Slaughter. Uh, there was also an older Chinese woman who was imprisoned for practicing Falun Gong. Um, I mean, she did really hard time. And as you can imagine, a Chinese prison is probably the worst kind of prison. Um, it's an emotional testimony that I'm will be honored to, I am honored that I, I will be sharing that with you. Um, clean, cleaning the audio as much as I can because it may, you know, it may be difficult, but I'm going to do my best. Now, there was another Chinese person, a doctor, who was forced to perform these harvesting operations. He escaped and uh, sought asylum in the UK, but uh, Jesus, the, the, the testimonies and the descriptions, it's just, it's just very chilling to listen to. And you wonder, I mean, you, I sat there and I wondered like, how can anybody participate in that? How can you say, okay, yeah, I'm going to do it. But you know, they have, they, they have no choice. It's either that or death or their families get hurt or, you know, it, it's just, it's incredible, you know? Um, so I sat on the audio for years and I just didn't know what the hell to do with it. It was significant, but um, when I came back from my trip, uh, my own world was changing. I mean, I was in the middle of a divorce. I was getting ready to move out of my house into a new country. It just, it just, you know, slipped away. The, mo the moment to post just slipped away and I kind of put it away and forgot about it. And now with this pandemic, which to me is more a psychological pandemic, I question every day the legitimacy of this virus. Not that I do not believe that there is a virus. It's just, there are so many questions. And why, why do I question? Why don't I just, you know, sit down like a good citizen and, and, and just take everything the government and the media tells me? And why is because it came from China. And there's so much misinformation from the mainstream media as well as independent sources. 
And um, everybody talks about like, oh, you're not an expert in the field. You're not a doctor. You're not this. Um, Why well, I'm actually an expert in my field um, because I've been studying mass media and journalism since I was actually in, in junior high. You know, since I was a kid, <laughs> this has been my passion and my life's work. Um, studying mass media, communications, journalism. You know. um, so I know to some of you credentials are important because you say, well, who the hell are you telling me uh, fake news and all this stuff? But I'm just putting that out, out there. I actually do have credentials. <laughs> um, so there's misinformation, there's propaganda. And if you've read history, this is, this is not new what governments do. And you think it's only places like China or Russia or North Korea. But in reality, um, cause I, God, I was talking to that, my husband last night, just thinking about all those media classes that I took and um, the, the things that we studied were history and the history of mass communications and propaganda with, um, you know, the Nazis and the, the Bolsheviks. And it's just, um, it's just, that is the way to get into people's psyches. And it's, it's evil, but it's pretty genius. And um, as I've been observing these past couple of years is how the media has changed to, um, you know, that it's really evolving into something that's more like propaganda and there is, I don't even see a ghost of real journalism. And if there are real journalists, what happens to them? They disappear, they get killed, they get threatened, and they're no longer allowed to do what, you know, what, what they're passionate about. So going back to the audio, I just think now is the time because we may as good spiritual people not be able to do anything at the moment. I mean, you feel helpless, well, what can we do? Um, but I think we owe it to ourselves and our children and the future of humanity. Um, we owe it, we need to seek the truth or at least listen to it. And let me tell you, China is wealthy, it's prosperous. However, the Chinese people are not free. And you see a side of their society you know, on the news and oh, it's all good. It's all good. You know, they're okay. They're making, they're, they're very wealthy and they have job. They all have jobs and they all have healthcare and they all, you know, it's all good. Um, but the good people, the lower classes, even the working class, middle class, um, they would tell you a different story if they could, if they were allowed to. And I got to, and you know, I got to hear some of those stories that I will post um, they'll tell you something completely different if they were allowed that voice. So over the holiday, I will be posting these audio pieces and hopefully with the transcripts as well. I really hope that you take the time to listen and think, what does this all mean? How is it connected? How can we help? Like them, we can protest by passing these stories along. And we can also help by meditation, by keeping those vibrations high. And I know it's difficult, but I think it's really what we have to do because we have to start eliminating that negative energy. That's the start. Um, because everything, everything is vibrations. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this and engaging. And I will be posting that really soon. So take care.